Hey, what's up guys? I'm Paul McFall. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro tutorial. So today we're going to talk about how to shoot and edit real transitions that you actually create with the movement of your camera. And they're actually pretty simple to do. First things first, let's talk about shooting. So when you get outside and you've got your shot all framed up, what you're going to want to do is hold it for about five seconds and then just simply pan out of the shot. Basically, you want to just start and end every clip with just some type of movement. Either you're going to pan into the shot to your subject and hold it, or you're just going to start shooting your subject first and then pan out of your shot. Once you've got that down pat, the rest is done in post, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So as usual, I'm using Final Cut Pro X on the MacBook Pro 2016, and the shots I chose today were actually somewhat planned out. The first shot is uh, that of a Ferris wheel at the National Harbor, and the second, um, Kelly and I were just hanging out with some friends of ours, and I just happened to remember that I needed a second shot for this tutorial, so second shot is just of Kelly, close up. So for the first shot, it's also important to note that I actually started off shooting the Ferris wheel first, and then I panned down and away. For the second shot, I actually started off shooting Kelly, and then I pan up and away to the house. So notice that this shot is actually being played backwards, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean. Being able to play your shot backwards to recreate this effect uh, it can definitely come in handy. However, you just want to make sure there's no awkward movement in the shot, such as birds flying backwards or people walking backwards, unless you're trying to achieve that effect. So both of these clips were actually shot at 30 frames per second. I'd recommend 60 for anyone else. However, you're going to want to shoot in anything above 24 because you're going to want to play around with the speed of the clips. And if you only shoot at 24, then you're going to have a really hard time slowing down your clips. So 30 and up, you're pretty much good to go. I recommend 60 and up, but that's just me. All right, so for the first clip, I've got a seamless drop from the Ferris wheel down to the ground. And for the second clip, I've got a drop from the top of the house down to Kelly. So notice there's a slight pause here. So we definitely wanna cut that out and start where the clip begins to drop. So I'd say probably about, probably about right there. All right. So when I put these two clips together, you'll notice that we have pretty much a seamless drop from one side to the other. And a lot of this has to do with color matching. So at the base of the Ferris wheel, notice that we have a lot of grays here and a lot of light colors in our sky. The side of the house definitely helps me blend that in. So when you actually drop from your first clip to your second, you definitely want to make sure there are some type of light colors as you're moving from one clip to the next. All right, so next we're actually going to start to play with the speed of the clips. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift B, which is going to bring up the Retime Editor. And this is actually a pretty cool tool in that it lets you control the speeds of two halves of the clip individually. So I'm just going to go ahead to the drop down of the second half of the first clip. And I'm just going to go to Custom and speed that up to 203. All right, for the second half of the clip, I've got to find the point in which I want to slow and speed up the footage. So I'm going to probably speed the footage up right before, probably right around this point, I want it started to slow down. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift B again to bring up the Retime Editor. And for the first half of the clip, hit the drop down, go to Custom. And here I'm gonna type in 300. And for the second half of the clip, I'm going to go ahead and just slow it down to 50%. So let's let that render, and then let's just see how it looks. All right, it looks pretty seamless. So the last thing that I did was I went over to my sound effects, and I searched for the whoosh effect. So let's go ahead and search that. And I believe I just used whoosh1. So just gonna grab that and drag it down. I 
placed it right where the two clips begin to transition and I don't know, let's see how it sounds. All right, I think that sounds pretty awesome. I think that when you add in sound, it definitely helps make the full effect more apparent. And I think it's just a great way to go. So, all right guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I actually think that real camera pan transitions are pretty awesome and I plan on using them in a lot more of my videos, especially the vlogs. So I hope you plan on sticking around and subscribing. Till next time, see you later. When I woke up this morning and the haters were up on me I just told them stay up out of my way Because I